back at this beautiful mature sycamore tree. We're going to be doing the same course that I did on the singular rope versus double rope system. There was a bit of confusion there uh, from what I was talking about. I was talking about two individual systems or one individual system and the time difference between them. But today we're going to be talking about the double rope system and the singular rope system and the time difference between the both. It's also known as a moving rope system or a stationary rope system or a static rope system. They all mean the same thing. Basically, we're going to figure out if it's actually quicker or slower to ascend and do a reduction style job on a DRT system rather than an SRT system. I did an SRT run uh, a couple of weeks ago and I think I got a time of three minutes and 50 seconds to do the whole course from when my feet lifted off the ground to when my feet landed back on the ground. So today we're going to do the exact same course, just with a DRT setup. On this setup here, I've got the hitch climber setup. It's cheap, it's reliable, it's all replaceable. Um, I do personally climb on the zigzag and I do prefer the zigzag than the hitch climber, but for today we're going to be climbing on the hitch climber because that's what I've got. Um, it shouldn't really make too much of a difference between DRT systems um, as long as you're on this style of system and not a Prusik or, or a Blake's hitch. I am going to be using a foot ascender, a CT foot ascender, just for the ascent, um, just to try and even the odds. I think if I was going to thrust all the way up, I don't think it would stand a chance. There is other methods like frog footing or foot locking, um, but the foot ascender does all the hard work, so and for about £30, it's well worth the money just to get a foot ascender. But anyway, here we go, the DRT run, Let's see what time we get. Hope you enjoy. So a quick reminder on the course, in case someone didn't see the last video, we've got this lovely mature sycamore. The idea is we're going to go right up, ascend up to this first limb here. We're going to go out, strop in, do an emulated cut, swing across to this next limb, go out to this taped point, emulated cut, swing across this bottom limb, emulated cut, move across this low limb, emulated cut. And the time's going to start when my feet lift off the ground and then when it hits the ground again. So that, that's going to be the course. Um, People are saying it's the same between um, one rope DRT and one rope SRT. I, I don't think that's true. I think DRT is better once you're in the crown, especially if you start going to the mechanical devices like the zigzag. Um, you're gonna be so smooth throughout on the limb walks and you have that mechanical advantage. Um, it's basically like a, a two to one sort of uh, system. Um, whereas SRT you don't have that, you're just along that static line, so it's slightly harder to get back in from limb walks. Um, but it's just the ascent. On something this size, uh, you're, gonna, you're just not going to be fast enough, but we'll see. I, I might surprise myself, I'm going give it, to give it me all again. Um, I'm quite badly sunburnt, I had quite a nice beach day uh, over the weekend, so I won't let that affect me, I'll push through. And I think there's a little bee's nest in there actually, so I'll have to be careful of that. To give it as much as a chance as possible, I have put it through a little pento pulley just so I've got limited friction, just something to add. Okay, so here's the singular system DRT or moving rope system run. Um, feet lift off the ground, go to all the four points, as soon as I land back on the ground, that's when the timer stops. Okay, ready, go. Because you're only going one pump at a time, it's a lot slower. It's still less energy than thrusting. But definitely more energy, more strenuous on the body than SRT. Just because it's one-sided, the amount of strain it's putting on your body. Massive difference than my SRT video.
Ah, I dislike this. For the people that just climb on DRT doing it wrong, it's horrible. I'm tired from that ascent, which slows you down. No point in getting to your work. I'm too exhausted. Tuck up. Still do the big swings because you only have one line to tend to. That's a benefit. Moving, maneuvering around the tree is fine. Because as you can see, I'm out of breath just from the ascent. Tap tap. Which isn't good. So the time to beat. Three minutes and 50 seconds for the SRT on the previous video. Go. <laughs> Nailed it. Run isn't that bad so far. Tap tap. Just to the floor now. Going for it. Fine. So there you go, that's the results of climbing the course on a moving rope system or a DRT system. Um, I think it was quite similar, it felt quite similar. The run wasn't perfect, there was a time when my side strap got snagged and that final descent, um, I should have let it run a bit more but with it being a hitch climber it's not as smooth as a zigzag. Um, but it's too hot to do that course again. Um, the ascent uh, really took it out of me really. Uh, Thrusting on just the singular foot is just not ergonomical. You, you're putting the wear on one side of your body and it's lots of like stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down rather than SRT, you're in the upright position and you're climbing it like a ladder. So it's good. On longer sense, I still do prefer SRT as I'm sure a lot of you do as well. Um, but moving around, it's great. And for how cheap that system is, you know, there's a lot of really expensive systems out there, 500 pounds plus um, for the simplicity of this you know it does have my approval I do like climbing on it and I feel like it got a decent time time isn't always just the main factor if it's the same or similar time but more energy exerted then I'd still go for the easier option especially if it's faster SRT really wins um, in conserving energy and longevity um, enabling you to climb for longer throughout your career so there you go I'll put the time here on screen of the time for DRT. SRT was around 3 minutes 50. Let's see how much this one compares. I think it will be close, but it definitely used a lot more energy than SRT. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Really enjoyed making this series. I really appreciate you guys, it really means a lot. Uh, I love the comments and the discussions we've all been having. Um, I'll try to reply to every comment I get. Um, and yeah, just 
keep talking about it, keep innovating, keep thinking of new ways that we can do things and, and we can make this industry better for everyone. See you next time. So a little bonus clip, um, my attempt at frog footing, I'm sure there's, um, or foot locking, I'm sure there's loads of different ways of doing this and this probably definitely isn't the most optimal way, but I believe you put it over the two ropes, it's an old way of ascending a, a large ascent before SRT was really a thing, so you double up on the rope, I've just got a distill, I'm sure that's not right. Um, so this is not a how-to set uh, section, I'd rather you guys sort of explain to me um, if you've got any experience with it, um, or even still climb on it, um, how you would set it up. I believe you meant to have a longer tail or more like a prussic, and it's a lot longer so you can get longer strides, but I'll just demonstrate me having a go just so I can retrieve uh, my top anchor there. Um, but yeah, excited. So the benefit of this is it's cheap, um, you just need a little prussic. It's not for actually working on, you'd, you'd switch over um, once you get up there either with a different system um, or you can untie it, pull it off and then you'd have the tail up there with you and you'd switch on to a DRT setup. So it's just for ascent. Um, just before you really had any mechanical systems, people are always working around um, problems and trying to find easier ways to do things and this was a solution. Um, and then we brought out um, mechanical um, systems like uh, uh, SRT and the knee ascender and the foot ascender and things like that that sort of sort of made it obsolete. I'm sure there's still people that still climb on this and love climbing on this um, but I would say it's a lot easier just to clip the rope into a uh, foot ascender and get on up there. Um, but there's no fun in that, there's a lot of skill in this. Um, I'm going to probably do quite a poor demonstration because I've never done it before but here we go. So to foot lock I always remember it using the outside of your feet. Um, so it's outside and then outside and then it almost slides like that and then you pinch it over the top. Foot lock, so you've locked your feet in there. I hope you can see that. Um, and then you just sit up and then you tend this up. So I probably could have got an extra six inches uh, if this was longer, but this is all I have. So. We'll just have to put up with that and then really your feet kind of never leave the position so all you do is slide them up and the weight of the line turns itself depending how flexible you are right up at the top lock your foot stand up i'm sure people can get in a method of sort of tending it as they come up maybe i'll try that by keeping my hand underneath compared to the single foot ascender this is a lot nicer like it just feels nicer hope you enjoyed that little bonus clip um I personally wouldn't climb on it, but it, it did the job, and I understand why people did. This is the real end of the video. Goodbye.